The whole human child. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. Man, I'm about to Google this dude afterwards. I, I'm just not beyond curious with this dude. <laughs> So today I learned that I can't do JoJo memes because uh, I was about to be spoiled by something. So I'm going to switch this video up. It's no longer going to be JoJo memes. It's going to be something else. I'll figure that out in the process. But you guys can see what happened to me that made me stop the video totally. I thought of a new way to take down Valentine. Oh my god! I'm getting spoiled. I can't do it. I'm getting spoiled. I'm getting spoiled. I can't do it. I can't do it. I wasn't even thinking. I don't want to be spoiled. Let's do a Salmonella. Hungriest man in history and why it sucks to be a pirate. Salmonella Academy is time to learn some things. Hey kids, I think we can all agree that there are few pastimes more grotesque than competitive eating. The concept of a bunch of guys pushing their anatomy to its limits just for sport leaves a bad taste in my mouth in more ways than one. But imagine if these men didn't adopt this habit just for fun. Imagine if some gross biological error forced them to eat like this for their entire life. Introducing Tarare. Tarare. Tarare was born in France around 1772 to a poor farming family. It's said that his appetite was so voracious that, by his teens, Tarare could eat an entire quarter of a cow carcass in a single day. You'd think he'd be like mega obese, but no, he only weighed 100 pounds by age 17. However, there were still a few things that stood out about Tarare appearance-wise. For one, he had a huge, stretched-out mouth with horribly stained teeth. He could reportedly fit 12 eggs in his cheeks at once, much like a chipmunk keeping its chipmunk eggs warm. Additionally, when Tarare was full, he'd get a crazy Octomom gut going, and any other time, he'd have a huge flap of stretched out skin hanging around his waist. He also stank to high hell, even by 18th century French peasant standards. He was described as reeking, quote, to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. So between all this and his horrendous outhouse yeah. flooding dumps, his family had had enough. Alright, you're eating us out of house and home here. You gotta go, man. You heard me. Kick bricks, froggy. Wow, he just called a French person a frog. That's so racist. No, it's not. They're all French. The guy just looks like a frog is all. Oh. Well, too late. I'm already offended. That's fair. Dislike. After leave- I don't understand it. To beg and steal just to satisfy his gargantuan appetite. Inevitably, people began to take notice of him, and eventually he landed a job as a street performer in Paris. Eating people food? Would hand entire baskets of apples, eggs, and even wine corks, and watch in delight as he horked them down without the slightest hesitation. Normally, this went off without a hitch, except for one time when he suffered a severe intestinal blockage. Fortunately, the crowd was kind enough to carry him to the hospital, where he was treated with the strongest laxatives the 18th century had to offer. I would draw what happened next but it would probably get my channel deleted. So let's just picture it for a few moments. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Cut to the year 1792. This marks the beginning of the War of the First Coalition. Ever heard of it? Me neither. Who was in it? Fucking everyone. Anyway, Tarare decided to enlist in the war. After all, maybe that profound emptiness he was feeling was just a lack of purpose in life. Turns out, no, he really was just psychotically hungry. Even after being granted quadruple rations, Tarare would still be digging through the trash pile whenever he got the chance. After suffering extreme exhaustion, he was sent off to the military hospital in Soutzorin. The staff there was so dumbfounded by the man's abilities that they decided to keep him there to run a few experiments. The first of which is only right, right? Tarare in a room with a meal prepared for 15 people. Naturally, he ate the entire thing and immediately fell asleep. Next, they presented him with a raw eel. In response, Tarare crushed the eel skull between his teeth before slurping down the entire creature in one go. Now, this is hair-clenchingly horrifying for a couple of reasons. Firstly, he put a whole frickin' eel in his stomach, yeah. but secondly, there had to be some point during digestion where the meat was gone but the bone still remained. Now, for those of you who don't know, an eel skeleton looks like this. That means Tarare had all of those needle-sized ribs stabbing into the walls of his stomach at once, and he was fine. He also ripped a live cat apart with his bare hands. Come the hell on! Later gagged up the fur and skin like an owl, but... You know, that's neither here nor there. He did? After reviewing our data, I've come to the scientific conclusion that, uh... Yeah, we got a goddamn demon on our hands. But as we all know, with great devour comes great responsibility. Since Tarare was still technically enlisted, the military decided to utilize his abilities for the greater good. For what? Hey, Tarare, to do me. what? You look like the Pringle guy. Hey, Tarare, it's me, the General. Listen, could you eat this box with a note in it for me? Hmm. If you do it, we'll give you a wheelbarrow full of bull organs. <laughs> Lo and behold, two days later, he passed the container in mint condition and was given his reward as promised. Cola? I don't remember eating no cola! 
They made him an official spy and sent him into Prussia with a document in his belly to be delivered to an imprisoned French colonel. Unfortunately, there are a couple things Torare couldn't do that are generally important when sneaking into another country. A, he couldn't speak German, and B, it's pretty hard to maintain a low profile when you're running around like a madman wolfing down garbage and mutilating small animals. So he ended up being captured by the enemy. Initially, he kept his mouth shut, for once, but after a whipping and a day in jail, Torare gave in. After confessing that he did, in fact, have vital intelligence snaking its way through his GI track, the Prussians chained him to a latrine until the box emerged 30 hours later. The note wasn't actually anything important, so they just mock executed him, gave him a severe beating, and sent him on his way. After all that, Terari returned to life at the hospital, desperate for a cure for his condition, but nothing they ever tried worked. Tobacco pills, <laughs> vinegar, juice cleanse, tell him just to quit being a fat ass. <laughs> Meanwhile, the man's endless hunger continued to get him into all sorts of trouble. He'd often sneak out of the hospital to eat the scraps behind the local butcher and fight stray dogs in the alley for their precious Why didn't he eat the dog? He'd also seek out patients undergoing bloodletting in order to take all their life juice for himself. On several occasions, he no. was even caught attempting to eat bodies in the mortuary. No. By this point in my research, I was so desensitized to this guy that I didn't even bat an eye when I first read that. I was just like, alright. I guess he must have been hungry. Anyway, the hospital no. staff begrudgingly tolerated Terare's buffoonery until one day when he went too far. Well, Terare, you've only had three mess hall raids, four miscellaneous trash-related mishaps, and one cadaver defiling. So do? I'd say, so far, this week's been pretty good. Uh, doctor, we should probably inform you that a 14-month-old child has gone missing from their room. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Okay. You know, yes, the animals were kind of messed up, but people eat animals, you know? Messed up. Dead body parts, all right, okay, fine, whatever. You know, what are you going to do with it? It's, it's really disrespectful, but hey. The baby, though? The whole human child? I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. Man, I'm about to Google this dude afterwards. I, I'm just now beyond curious with this dude. Torare, look at me. Did you eat a fucking baby? No, Terrari really. was promptly kicked out of the hospital and spent four years out and about. You kicked him out? You, you just let him go? You're no longer... They, they, everybody else's responsibility, not y'all's. Uh, just, just, just kick him, alright. Terrari was promptly kicked out of the hospital and spent four years out and about doing, you know, whatever horrific shit you can imagine. When he came back, he was suffering from advanced tuberculosis and died shortly after arrival. During his autopsy, the surgeons found that when they looked into his mouth, they could see all the way down his throat and into his stomach cavity. As you can imagine, his whole abdominal region was profoundly deformed. Basically, if this is a normal human, this is what they found inside Terrare. Just like the man's mind, we can see that around 90% is devoted towards food and 10% towards everything else. So, moral of the story here is that, no, you know what, not even I can find anything resembling a moral here. No. Not all stories have a point to them. Sometimes they're just sad and disgusting from beginning to end. Is that from that? 26. He died at 26. Most of his gut, aside from the massive fatty livers, his remaining organs was decaying and smelled so bad, the chief surgeon of the hospital called off the operation before they could look any further. Oh, 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 wow. I feel so gross. <laughs> All right. Why well, sucks to be a pirate? Hey, little Jimmy. Yeah, what's up? Do you like Pirates of the Caribbean? Kind of, yeah, right. yeah. So do you think it'd be fun to be a pirate? No. Yeah? Well, guess what? You couldn't be more wrong. Mm -mm. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. At some point, every kid has dreamed about being a swashbuckling, corn shuckling, wife cuckling, cock suckling pirate. But trust that's me when I from. say, it was really not all it's cracked up to be. First, I we'll bet. talk about the food. So one staple of the pirate diet was salted meat, usually wild oxen or pork. And I love jerky as much as the next guy, but this wasn't like a bag of Jack Links. In fact, it was probably closer in texture to your shoes than any meat you've ever eaten. In those days, you couldn't just snap into a Slim Jim. That's a modern luxury that we take for granted. Back then, the slogan was, gnaw on a Slim Jim for minutes on end, like grinding it between your molars while the gallons of salt turn your mouth into a desert until the mangled hunk of flesh in your mouth is just soft enough to be shoved down your greasy fucking pirate throat without tearing a hole. Yay! Another essential food item was known as hardtack. This was essentially just flour and water baked into a cracker 
like brick. Beyond the fact that it was totally flavorless, hardtack was also extremely dense, to the point where pirates would often have to slam their fists down on it in order to break it into pieces small enough to fit in their mouth. As long as it was kept dry, hardtack almost never spoiled, although it often became infested with weevils. Um, excuse me, sir? I'm a vegan, so like, can I have a new piece? One without any of Mother Nature's beautiful creatures in it? Thanks. Wait a minute, is this gluten free? This better be hemp rope! <laughs> nah, but the weevils didn't make you sick or change the taste all that much, so, and this is true, the crew would just eat it in the dark, so that way they couldn't tell if they were eating a normal chunk or a weevily one. Uh, then there's the crowding. So pirate ships typically packed in as many crew members as possible, because more pirates means more manpower when you go to board an enemy ship. Of course, the downside to that is that you're basically like a bunch of hairy, unwashed sardines. Let me illustrate what a typical night below deck was like. So you're sprawled out on the damp, musty wood floor. Everything's pitch black, you can't see a thing. The smell of the filth and the mold forces you to only breathe through your mouth. Suddenly, your left hand feels wet, probably just seawater leaking through the hull. You sniff your hand, nope, no, that's piss. piss. You feel something furry rub up against your elbow. It was either the body of a diseased rat or the beard of your diseased crewmate. Either way, that's probably where the piss came from. Some guy's moaning loudly in the next room. Hopefully he's just jerking off, because if he's dying, that's one more body to deal with in the morning. Rinse and repeat for eight hours, and then it's daytime. The poor diet and cramped conditions led to disease being a huge problem aboard pirate ships. The most well-known of these diseases is scurvy, where you don't get enough vitamin C. When scurvy first begins, you just kind of feel tired all the time, no big deal. Then you get weird spots on your skin and your gums start bleeding. This progresses until all your teeth fall out and all of your body's mucous membranes start gushing blood and pus, causing you to die. So that's a lot of fun. There were tons of other diseases too, I won't go through them all, but here's a few honorable mentions. Also, some people say that alcoholism is a disease. I might just be disturbed, but that's one sickness I could definitely get down with now that i understand the context of that yes I, I, I will deal with the alcohol give me the rum where's my rum yes rum will make my life a little bit more easier being a pirate holy shit i get it i get it now give me the goddamn rum whatever i gotta do to not deal with all of yous I will drink the damn rum. If it is a disease, then yeah, just about every pirate had this one. Well. If anything, though, I'd call that one of the few upsides of pirate life. Finally, there's the combat. So you've gone through all these disgusting, Let's horrible living conditions, off. but at least you can enjoy the thrill of battle, right? Swinging from rope to rope, sword Shit. in your mouth, long, intense saber duels, that kind of thing. But that's typically not how it went down. For one thing, when pirates boarded a ship, nine times out of ten, they just surrender immediately. Because what are a bunch of well-groomed merchants going to do against a horde of disgusting barbarians? If the defending ship did decide to fight back, though, the resulting brawl wouldn't be anything like the movies. It'd be way worse, like immediate R rating. Because pirates rely a lot on brutality, both because they don't have much real training, and because it scares the shit out of people. If you were a deckhand on an invaded ship, and you were stupid enough to fight back, you wouldn't be dancing around doing flips and shit none of that. Instead, they'd probably shoot you in the stomach with a flintlock pistol, kick you to the ground, chop off your shoulder blade with a hand axe, gouge out your eyes with a marlin spike, wind your intestines around the prow, and then toss your twitching body overboard. And that's only a slight exaggeration. Honestly, if Jack Sparrow got attacked by actual pirates, he wouldn't last a second. It's kind of like a used car salesman going to prison, like, I'll be fine. If anybody tries intimidating me, I can get out of it with my quick wit and charming personality. Boy, you look real pretty from behind. Oh, wow. I'm boned. So yeah, in short, if you're thinking about pulling a Captain Phillips anytime soon, I'd advise against it. That's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Anella, and thank you for watching. Yeah, after learning the story of pirates and understanding a little bit deeper what pirates have to go through or what they had to go through, no, it doesn't seem like a fun life. Looking back on that, it doesn't look like a lot of people had the fun life, you know? Shit. What are you talking about? This is 2020. Some people don't have the fun life now. What the hell am I talking about? But there we go, Blaze Squad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you blaze up the like button. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video.